Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. I'm Eric Wolf, and I am delighted to welcome you to the third session of the Foodtrex Global Summit today on Thursday, April 15, 2021. Today we'll be talking about what is your appetourism strategy. And I am very pleased to be able to introduce to you probably the world's only expert on happy tourism, uh, Tanya Ari Koroshek. <laughs> right. We had we had lessons before we started on how to pronounce Tanya's name. So, um, but when we were thinking about sessions that our community would be interested in um, in hearing about at the summit this year, we were look, we always look for things that are innovative, different, unique, and so on. And this idea of sustainability really wove nicely into uh, what Tanya's work is with regards to the tending to bees, the, the caring for bees. And then of course, what everyone loves is the honey and the honey products. So Tanya very graciously agreed to speak at the summit today. And we're very excited to hear what you have to say. So. Um, just let me know when you'd like to play the video, Tanya. Hi, Eric. Uh, thank you for the introduction and few words. Um, yes, I'm happy to be with you, all of you. So very welcome to all of you listening to my session today. Uh, I will speak about one special topic. As Eric already said, it's about apitourism. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there is not a lot of you that actually knows what apitourism is. This is why I'm here for today. But before the beginning, I would just like to say a few words about me. Well, my name is Tanya and I'm coming from a tiny country in the middle heart of Europe, uh, it's from Slovenia. We are a very small country, only 2 million inhabitants, but our country is very diverse, very green. And as uh, Slovenia promotes herself, it, we are green, active and healthy destination. And this is a paradise for bees, for honeybees. Uh, what I'm going to say or what my speech will be about, you will hear in next uh, few minutes when I ask Eric to play the video. Please, Eric. Slovenski turizem je jedinstvena in unikatna turistična ponudba, ne samo v Sloveniji, ampak v celem svetu. Tukaj se lahko obiskovalci brez problema približajo popolnoma čebeli, vidijo njihovo življenje, spoznajo njihovo življenje, seveda lahko spoznajo tudi čebeli predelke. Našim obiskovalcem predstavimo tudi bogato tradicijo, predvsem slikanja panskih kušnic in pa bogato zgodovino, ki imamo iz 18. stoletja. Poleg tega se lahko preizkusijo tudi v relaksaciji v Čebrnjaku s obiskovalcem, ki pridajo na obisk. Povem tudi to, da če bi bila naša ali vaša država tako organizirana, kot je eden izmed čebelih panjev tukaj, ne bi bilo recesije in revčin. In zakaj je temu tako? Vsaka čebela, ki je v panju, dela za skupno dobro, če začne delati sama zase, čebelja družina propada. V lanskem letu smo imeli predvsem američane kot obiskovalce in vsi američani, ki so prišli k nam, so večje dela spraševali ali prevaž čebele tudi umirajo. Ker po svetu čebele umirajo tudi na tako veliki ravni, da se je pojavilo vprašanje ali bilo dovolj vpraševanja za preživetje oziroma za proizvodne hrane. Pri nas temu ni tako in zato se slovensko čebelarstvo in Slovenija kot država lahko postavi za zgled za cel svet. Thank you, Eric. Okay, you should be able to share your screen again now. Yeah, yes. Thank you. Uh, so I think you got first impression what I'm going to talk about today. But as uh, said in the introduction, um, let me just briefly say about my background. Uh, well, I own the company. It's family-run business for almost 30 years now. Uh, we are the biggest um, travel organizer in Slovenian market for pilgrim tours around the globe. And I have to say that uh, the trends that are uh, actually now in for the tourism 
we did it uh, this way for the last 20 years for sure. And this is what I, uh, let's say, integrate. And also when I start with incoming, with niche product as pilgrim tourism is in uh, first place, I start with api tourism. And uh, I, will try, I will start with a few words uh, about tourism trends. Uh, just, okay. So I'm sure you're aware about trends today. Uh, I mean, there was a great shift uh, about the demand and in mindset of people, what, what are we looking for? What kind of holidays and travels uh, we, need, we need now in this moment, the life, the, the time we live now. Uh, so it's all about authentic experiences to meet local people, uh, to be in the nature, uh, to have active holidays, to be actually part of the travel that you're not only observer when you travel around uh, other destinations, but you're like an actor in the story. Uh, and it's all about uh, to educate yourself when, while you're traveling uh, actu and actually be creative. Uh, in uh, the traveling you make. And when we travel, the best thing uh, is food and drink. This is what we remember always. It's always, if you, if you meet locals and you eat local food, uh, I mean, is the best value what you can um, get from the destination you're traveling. And of course, uh, like the situation we are facing uh, currently, so Corona crisis, I mean, the virus that is affecting the health of us, uh, it's already for the last, uh, I would say, um, five to 10 years, what uh, I'm remarking here in my travel company, that there is a great interest uh, in demand uh, for destination and products related to health and well-being. Uh, and all in all, uh, when we are traveling, uh, I noticed that the most important thing um, when I'm organizing the trip for groups or individuals, uh, it was about the travels that is um, about the experience of the people that are transforming them. It's all about the values. Uh, and uh, even though Corona is affecting us uh, badly, I mean, on uh, uh, economic level, uh, but on the other hand, it was a time uh, when we needed to stop ourselves and rethink re uh, our values. And this is a great opportunity, I think, for uh, the tourism industry uh, to even more focus on um, tourism products uh, related to sustainability, um, to uh, authentic experience uh, and face to people uh, their knowledge uh, and uh, what they have uh, to offer to us. And by that, uh, when we see all these trends, uh, when I started uh, to develop a new niche uh, tourism uh, product, uh, I actually found that the API tourism, as we call it in Slovenia, is a fusion of green destinations, API culture, and travel, where people are the most important actors, locals. Uh, it's about uh, our beekeepers that open their homes, they open their apiaries, because in Slovenia, uh, the apiary is not place uh, just, uh, it's not a beehive, uh, a box that is placed uh, somewhere um, in the nature, uh, but it's a house, our beekeepers in Slovenia, uh, they build houses for the bees. Uh, and actually in Slovenia is a bit different uh, the background of our beekeepers than from other countries. It's not just the industry, uh, so uh, something that uh, beekeepers are living from, but uh, beekeeping is love to the bees, uh, for the bees. Uh, and in Slovenia, we have a special world uh, for uh, bees uh, when they die. We compare it uh, to, to human. Uh, otherwise, in Slovenia, we have different words when we say that animal die. It's not the same word. We have different words. So this special correlation with uh, our bees was so strong that they start building house. Of course, there is also one important thing about the bees in Slovenia. In Slovenia, we have authentic and protected bee. It's called Karnica bee. This is one of the greatest uh, bee species in the world. It's known for their uh, its calmness, uh, and uh, she's um, uh, very good uh, in honey uh, production. 
uh, this is why you can handle with bees. I mean, beekeepers can easily handle with the bee, and also it's safe for visitor to visit the beekeepers. Uh, let me just briefly uh, go through the st uh, strategic development of apiturism. When I start uh, with the idea, I mean, it was an idea of Slovenian Beekeepers Association. They come to me at that time when we work for, um, I was organizing uh, uh, professional excursions for our beekeepers going to um, international congresses. And at that time they come with uh, the idea how could we combine travel and apiculture? And at that time, I just started uh, my studies. I started to work in uh, my company, our company. Uh, and I said, oh, that's an easy job. I mean, great idea. I will do that, no problems. Actually, when I started, uh, I found out there is zero. Um, uh, I started from zero point. There was nothing like this uh, at the world level. So uh, we start educating our beekeepers, um, connecting them in the net, um, how to be the part of uh, tourism, how to present yourself, how to open their homes uh, as tourism uh, service, uh, service providers. It was a long, um, long process, but I think we did a really good uh, job uh, one thing is, um, it is true, Slovenia is small, only 2 million inhabitants, and with its diversity, we have Alps, we have Pannonian uh, Plain, we have uh, coastal sites, so a mix of all um, in one small place where the bee can be all over uh, our destination. So it was not so difficult to connect uh, all the beekeepers. Um, as I said in the beginning, we have 2 million people, but there is more than 10,000 of beehives in Slovenia, and every fourth uh, Slovenian is kind of beekeeper. This is very interesting uh, information. So we also um, established a certification system. It was a kind of a guarantee um, and guarantee standard when a group or a, a visitor come to our beekeepers, that they knew how to behave, what to offer, and the, uh, uh, the information that they need to do, uh, offer the experiences to, uh, to, to welcome all the visitors into the apiary, to show how the beekeeper is working with the bees, to show uh, what is the bee and what is the bee queen, and how the honey is being produced, and how uh, our uh, bees are uh, bringing the pollen into the, the beehive, and what can you do when you're in the apiary, in the bee house? This is the magical moment when you enter the mystical world of bees. I mean, what, when you have a bee house and when you enter in the full uh, progression, I mean, now April, May, June, when the time is right and uh, the great weather is outside, uh, the, the fragrance that is coming uh, or is full uh, with the air coming from the hive, uh, the air full with uh, propolis, uh, pollen, uh, honey is very, very beneficial uh, for uh, human, uh, for all of us. I mean, uh, it, it's very stress relief technique. Uh, there are a lot of uh, techniques and um, that are not even developed uh, enough that we could um, speak more about more strategic about it, but I will show you later a bit more uh, on. Uh, at that time, we also became uh, coordinators of Apimondi, a working group for apiturism. This is international or world biggest uh, beekeeping organization that found or um, uh, actually <coughs> found that uh, apiturism could be also interested for all beekeepers all, our, uh, all over the world to implement Slovenian model to other countries. Uh, at the beginning, when we start um, to promote puppy tourism as a travel uh, trend, uh, we actually thought it would be interested only for uh, beekeepers. Uh, but it was, it was uh, opposite. I mean, more and more uh, my groups uh, coming to Slovenia for other, um, uh, let's say, prime interests, so for the nature, for the cities, for the culture, uh, I always introduce one of the visits to beekeepers. I can still guarantee that this was one of the top visits uh, and uh, highly ranked as 10, usually. Because uh, 
not a lot of people is aware what honeybees are, that they are, they are not necessarily aggressive and they're very useful uh, for humankind. I'm sure you know that if there is no bee, there is no life. The, uh, bees are the main pollinators uh, on the world. Uh, so it was uh, about the inspired travels we offered to a wide range and the different um, um, group types. Uh, so now we are running tours also in other countries around the globe. Uh, at that time in Slovenia, the community of professional uh, guides uh, started with education and they actually offer now um, uh, even uh, the, uh, the educational models where you can apply to become a happy touristic guide. And as I said previously, one of the main trends now what we face for last four or five years is demand for epitherapy and happy well-being uh, programs. Let me just briefly say, epitherapy is the world for the treatment is more in a medical uh, way. When they treat uh, diseases uh, or some medical issues uh, with the medical assistance of epitherapy. In my opinion, I rather speak about happy well-being program when uh, you try to um, um, help yourself or uh, to improve, <coughs> improve your uh, mental uh, and physical state with uh, bee products. <coughs> At that time, when we start with um, development, there was, uh, of course, Slovenian Beekeepers Association, the main force, they did a lot of initiatives like Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> uh, they did initiative uh, for traditional Slovenian breakfast. Now we have for the last 10 years, uh, every third uh, weekend in uh, November, in all Slovenian schools and kindergartens, uh, they eat honey and all other local Slovenian products in their schools. Uh, this, uh, also, uh, this initiative is spread also among other neighboring countries becoming traditional as well there. There is another important uh, thing we did World Bee Day uh, from 2018, 20 of May, we celebrate all over the world, World Bee Day. Uh, we have World Epitherapy, uh, Epitherapy Day in Slovenia. I used to work the most important men uh, that introduced epitherapy as very beneficial technique, medical um, uh, <clears throat> medical therapy uh, with honeybees. This is 30 of March, and uh, also uh, the reputation of Slovenian honey. Uh, these are all initiatives and uh, programs that Slovenian Beekeeping Association is praying playing main role. <clears throat> then Apimundia, I already explained before. Uh, behind us about, uh, for Api Tourism stands also Ministry for uh, Agriculture and Environment, Slovenian Tourism Board. You can see our <clears throat> promotional brochure from two years back uh, when Slovenia is promoting Api Tourism as one of the national uh, tourism products. And for uh, instance, I can uh, say in Slovenia, uh, we run each year uh, one, um, uh, how you say, one, uh, one project uh, called um, uh, muni uh, Friendly to Municipality, Friendly to the Bees. So our municipalities are uh, competing between each other, which one does more for uh, bees in their environment and it's growing each year and also spreading to other uh, destinations and cities around the world. Uh, we did one uh, map of Slovenia when we actually uh, show Slovenia uh, bordering uh, countries to Italy, Austria, Hungary and Croatia. But the main point was to show the beekeeping visits, all the certified um, um, tourism providers are found all over Slovenia. Either they offer uh, museums, either they offer epitherapy, either they're uh, working on uh, food and uh, beverage from uh, honey. 
Uh, this is uh, where you can find all of uh, the apitourism providers offering their services. We already speak uh, about certified apitourism service providers. For instance, in Slovenia, we have between 40 and 50 uh, certifi certified providers at the moment. Currently, we run one project um, together with uh, Slovenian Beekeeping Association uh, to, to do the um, uh, international uh, certification system that will be that would be available also to other countries. So here is the impression what you can actually experience when you go visit Slovenia, uh, how we combine one of our travels, one of our tours. We always combine api tourism visitor towers, beekeepers with also other uh, nature, uh, with our uh, culture heritage, we must see, I'm sure uh, uh, you already heard in Slovenia, Bled or Ljubljana, these are the most common and the most promoted um, um, sightseeing in Slovenia. So we do a combination of everything. Usually our tours are tailored to the needs of the groups or individuals. But on the other hand, you can see our beekeepers uh, at their work, you can see uh, the cheese, for instance, on these pictures, you see the goat cheese with chestnut honey. And in the background, uh, you can uh, also see the, uh, the honey sparkling meat. Uh, you can see uh, apiary, uh, epitherapy chamber when the man is inhalating. This is direct inhalation. It's more medical treatment for asthmatic disease or just stress relief technique. In just in the right corner, you can see honey massage. Honey massage with bio honey is also one uh, special treatment. It's not a classical uh, massage, uh, but it's more like tapping on the back. Uh, and it's also correlated with, um, um, uh, with uh, reflex massage because on the back, we also have all the places, um, the points of uh, this massage as you have it on the foot or on your hand. And when you do the honey massage, it's very, very interesting. Uh, the, the masters, when they do that, they said the uh, outcome is like uh, one ticky uh, uh, white uh, thing coming uh, out. And they said there are toxins, toxins uh, coming out. So it's really, really good stress relief and cleaning technique. And there are also, of course, uh, other visits and all other experience you can combine like workshops, like lectures, like lectures on usage of um, bee products uh, in the food or as uh, part of our uh, well-being prog program. So what, why is honey good for? Why is pollen good for? What is uh, propolis good for? You know, you probably heard that propolis, propolis is, the, is the only natural antibiotic uh, so there are a lot of, lot of interesting things that, that uh, are said during our tours. Of course, uh, when we do the tours, they can be more professional, more as a training. This is usually uh, appropriate for beekeepers or those uh, that uh, want to really get uh, to know more in detail uh, about bees, about their life, about uh, the breeding techniques and uh, all uh, other topics uh, about the bees. On the other hand, when they open the hive like this, it's like observation uh, panel, ob observation window, when the beekeeper can show you how the beekeeping uh, family is organized, uh, how you can find the queen, where is uh, the, the queen, uh, where is the honey, uh, because uh, as you know, uh, I'm sure you heard the bees are very, very organized. If not uh, before you heard it uh, at the beginning when our, one of our best beekeepers explained the important role of our beekeepers. And here you can see the interior of our um, one of our bee houses uh, specialized for epitherapy. There are a lot of um, uh, ways how you can uh, use the benefits uh, of the bees. For instance, it can be inhalation. Uh, it's very good, uh, as I told in the beginning, when you have some asthmatic disease or you have uh, allergy problems. Uh, on the other hand, um, our beekeepers placed uh, beds on the top of the hives so you can lie on the hives. 
uh, you are, majority of us uh, would not even notice, uh, but there is a vibration coming from the hive. It's very, very interesting when they measure with special equipment, um, how, uh, how beneficial is for a human. There is also uh, um, a lot of works uh, now on, um, uh, how you say, um, sound therapy. Uh, bees are making very different sounds in every different uh, stage uh, of the year and their work. So they're still developing, but it's also known they're already doing programs uh, with uh, some kind of uh, therapies. And of course, I told before about the honey massage and other uh, programs we, we run. Uh, we do a lot of lectures on apinutricism, uh, how we can combine uh, in the food and how you can use it as uh, a complement um, uh, to the um, to the some medical uh, treatments and as I said before what is the most important when you travel is about learning and be creative we really try our uh, guests our visitors our clients to be part of the the story uh, to be to be close uh, to see to open the hive to work with uh, bees you can see here how gentle the bees are. Uh, if you know how to treat the bees, the bees are not aggressive and they will not hurt you. And they will, and you can easily go really close. You can uh, even uh, touch the bee. And as said before, the culinary part of all the travels is the main part. I mean, it's not uh, so um, developed uh, yet, but there is still a lot of place uh, how we could uh, place uh, or replace honey uh, in our cooking, uh, in our uh, culinary instead of uh, normal sugar. And when we travel, everything is all about respecting the nature to be sustainable um, traveler around the world. I know I have only few minutes left. So I would just like to point out uh, really important messages. Uh, when, when people visit our beekeepers or whenever you see the beekeeper, you, you need to be aware uh, that when you see the beekeeper, they're trying to uh, raise the awareness of the bees for the humankind. If there is no bees, there are no, uh, no food, there is no life. And uh, there is a rise of awareness through the travel of healthy and locally produced food, as we heard also before. Um, to enrich the knowledge to the travel about the use and effects of bee products and epitherapy. Uh, and uh, one of the impacts uh, that is already shown is this international certification system and travels that are spreading around other destinations uh, around the world. What is our role, uh, me as my company and me myself, uh, I'm still in the partnership with Slovenian Beekeeper Association and lately also with Slovenian Beekeeping Academy, where we run educational programs on apiturism with the aim uh, to spread, to, to share the knowledge what we have in Slovenia to other destinations that they could implement or start similar practice also in other countries around the world. We are trying to show that it's also apiturism could be a good business opportunity. We run uh, leadership programs and team buildings for companies uh, from uh, different countries around the globe. Uh, and uh, we are at the moment the only accredited travel company for happy tours and happy well-being programs uh, on the world level. I hope uh, I summarized the main facts about the, the happy tours and what happy tourism is, uh, what we are trying to do, and that is really one of the uh, top um, tourism trends on the rise. Thank you for your attention, uh, and I will be happy to uh, answer the questions. Wonderful. Thank you, Tanya. I was saying before that you learn something new every day, and, and I've learned something from every one of our speakers so far. This is so interesting. How many people visit Slovenia each year for apitourism? It's difficult to say because um, my company is not, not measuring uh, all the individual visitors, uh, but I can say that uh, 
from uh, from the feedback from our beekeepers that are uh, these certified uh, certified tourism providers, um, they got more and more visitors um, each year, uh, especially individual visitors. So the the lovers of the I'm sorry. The lovers uh, of uh, the nature and um, the bees. So, from my company, I can speak uh, that I have uh, like 20, 30 groups uh, for beekeeping reason. The rest are just uh, the, let's say, normal groups coming from other interests and combined with beekeeping visits. Okay, and I would like to encourage anyone that would like to ask Tanya a question about apotourism or anything, maybe a question about Slovenia, uh, please put it in the Q&A channel. I met some people from Slovenia at the uh, World Travel Market a couple years ago, and of course we were looking at the, the food and drink, wonderful, wonderful wines, and I would have to say Slovenia is in my uh, list, uh, my top five list of places that I want to come, just everything about the scenery, the nature, the sustainability commitment, and then obviously Apotourism is really kind of the epitome of sustainability. Everything that you're doing is it's it's a sustainable practice, a sustainable industry for sustainability minded travelers. Um, can you tell me how much marketing do you do to get these kinds of tourists to come? Or is it mostly word of mouth and people, it's more passive, people just find out about it and they come on their own? Uh, well, actually, uh, um, it's a long way uh, from the beginning to where we are now. Uh, I'm sure there was um, a great uh, step when we got the support of the Ministry and Slovenian Tourism Board, because before we did everything uh, by ourselves. So usually we attend uh, some uh, professional um, um, professional fairs, like beekeeping fairs, when we try to promote in beekeeping um, circles, we are very known, Slovenia is really number one uh, destination for beekeeping and for, for all uh, the initiatives and also apitourism. So in um, this case, uh, we did promote promotion through the fairs, through B2B meetings and uh, through being uh, the part of Apimondia International Beekeeping Organization. But on the other hand, it was very, very difficult at the beginning to promote and to pursue uh, people to come to Slovenia for apitourism. Actually, usually I got, huh, what? Honeybees? No, 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 not at all. They were all afraid. Actually, they didn't know about honeybees. They didn't know that honeybees can be gentle and uh, that it, it has so much to offer. Uh, you know, also in Slovenia, what is interesting, we have more than 10,000 of beehives all over, uh, all over Slovenia, but this is something normal for us. Uh, I was also in the position when I had to learn uh, uh, our people, beekeepers and others, to be proud of what we are, what we have. This is uh, something unique you won't find anywhere in the world. Bee houses, this is unique to Slovenia. Epitherapy programs, it's unique because you, you cannot do it in other countries. If you don't have bee houses, you cannot do it. So the promotion is uh, still the issue in my uh, um from my, from my point of view, me as a company, as a travel company, the, the hardest thing is to sell, travel, when you only have a leaf left or you have a, the presentation and uh, to say to you, Eric, you have to come to Slovenia. You had to experience before uh, the word of mouth is the best way uh, when people say, yes, I want to come. Uh, even the world um, travel market in London, I think two or three years back, it was all about the bees. I don't know if you attended that time, um, uh, Eric, but it was uh, all about the bees. So I think that was one of the best promotions at that time. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Slovenia as um, the destination that is promoting itself really as a uh, boutique country uh, with boutique destination, new, unique uh, experiences, uh, green, active and healthy uh, programs and products. I think this is um, the best what works for us for the promotion of puppy tourism. One of the things that struck me in what you were talking about is the how much of apotourism has to do with health and well-being 
And I, I you know, of, of course it does. I mean, honey is, is a healing product. And, and I guess I forgot that when in our conversations before, we were always talking about either the care of the bees or the, the culinary products, but the health and well-being. And so I was wondering, the how are the sales of the apotherapy products doing? Are they increasing and are they exported? Yes, we have one company in Slovenia called Medex. They are also on the market for last 30 years. So uh, I can say for last four to five years, uh, the, expansion of, uh, the expansion of these uh, healthy products um, is really um, number one in Slovenia and they're exporting also uh, to other countries. There are some other great destinations, beekeeping um, destinations as Turkey and Romania. Uh, their, um, their situation regarding, uh, how you say, legality, legal issues uh, to sell bee products is different uh, to, Slo to Slovenia. In Slovenia, for instance, propolis is known to be natural antibiotic, but, but we are not allowed to sell it and beekeep uh, beekeepers are not allowed to sell it uh, just legally. Uh, you can have uh, the company as Medex. They are uh, they can uh, uh, they can sell it. Otherwise, it's very difficult. You you cannot say it's for medical treatment. You can sell it all, all, uh, only as uh, additive. So like um, uh, how you say uh, the word um, supplement. Like supplement. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. As a supplement. Yes. Are are the products certified by any in any way? Yes, they have to be. Everything okay. has to be certified, otherwise you can, you are not able to sell it. Okay. Yeah, because I know that New Zealand takes honey very seriously as well. Yeah, they have Manuka honey, but uh, it's great honey, but they did a great marketing. I can assure you that uh, the, uh, the quality of Slovenian honey compared to New Zealand honey is equal. But it's just the matter of marketing and um, the, um, uh, the programs uh, that were developed. I mean, with, uh, in, with some universities, they have money for uh, these studies. In Slovenia, maybe it was not uh, so financial supported. Yeah. I also think that sometimes when you have these, when you have complex marketing programs or complex certification programs, there is a huge opportunity to confuse the consumer. So when I lived in New Zealand, I learned a little bit more about Manuka honey and the different levels of, of the honey and the certification. And, um, and they, you can't import any honey to the country. They freak out. They will mm -hmm. arrest you at the border. Yeah. Um, but I think I think then you, you look at Manuka honey overseas and it's it's very um, it's very confusing and some of the so you you will see a product on a grocery store shelf and it's a very weak concentration of Manuka but they make it sound like it's got it's extra mm -hmm. whatever you know and then you could be charging like 30 40 50 pounds or 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars for a, a jar of honey that New Zealand would be on the low level that might only be 10 or 15 dollars right but it was it's a poor quality so i don't know what the solution is there do you have any any advice there actually i don't have i mean it's the same with honey or bee products uh, same as other bio eco organic food at the moment uh, i think we are all skeptic more and more when you see the the sign bio eco i don't think uh, i think the the uh, the best thing how you guarantee uh, the quality is to buy from locals in yeah. Slovenia we are very strong in marketing and promoting Slovenian honey we also have Slovenian jar so for all the beekeepers they uh, get, uh, put their honey on the analysis they got a mark the label and they uh, they are uh, obligated actually to use Slovenian jar for the honey. So this is the way how you can uh, uh, you can difference from, let's say, uh, less quality honey, or mm -hmm. even it's not honey. We know that. It's true. I was watching a documentary on Netflix, and they were talking about honey production yeah. and how a lot of what is sold as honey is actually yeah. rice syrup. Mm. Yeah, the pr the problem is when you see the honey production on the world level. Uh, and then you compare it uh, with uh, the production of royal jelly 
it does match because the royal jelly is coming from China. But when you see the production of honey and the production uh, of uh, royal jelly, it does match. So yeah. something is wrong. Even the problem, the main problem is when you import from uh, other countries to Europe and then from Europe, you sell it to, let's say, states. The declaration is European uh, origin in uh, Europe. So this is the main issue. This is still a big issue. Yeah. Well, I suppose one solution is to buy organic honey, but then you have you pay for that. There's the certification. But like you said, to buy local. So now that I'm living in Spain, uh, there are so many local honeys on offer, but they're not organic. And you just you just know, right? You talk to the the guy at the market, and you know that they are they're real honey. They're, it's not someone's not sitting there in their garage taking rice syrup that's been imported and adding honey. It's just not happening, right? Mm -hmm. And you can you can even taste in the flavor that it's real honey. So, in in that way, you are buying local. It's not certified organic, but like you said, you know, buy local, and and you'll get the real thing usually. Yeah, it's also one interesting thing. Uh, there is also a French documentary about the honey. Uh, they measured um, the metal, uh, metal um, small pieces uh, in uh, the honey uh, produced in the center of uh, Paris. Actually, they found out that the honey was pure. Uh, you know, because yes. uh, the bees are really, really amazing. Uh, what do they do in their stomach when they produce the honey because they are not collecting the honey? is um, really at the other level and it's not um you know they say uh, only uh, only uh, human is uh, sorry uh, uh, the bee is the only uh, animal or the species that is uh, connected to to man on the energetic uh, energy level so uh, there is a lot in this yes Tanya, is your operation seasonal or year round? Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, yeah, we we uh, we run uh, tours, let's say, all year round. Um, but the main uh, time for visit Slovenia to see all the best practices between April and October when the weather is right and the bees are out. But uh, in other uh, months, uh, we try to do more about uh, lectures and educational models. And we also go abroad uh, to try to, uh, to show uh, this, uh, I mean, implement in other countries. And that actually leads us to our next and final question, which is, have you worked with any other countries besides Slovenia to develop apatourism? And if so, what challenges did you have? Um, I was part uh, in uh, three uh, projects. Uh, the, the main, the main, pro the main problem is uh, the culture and um, the the organization of beekeepers. Uh, as I told in the beginning, Slovenia is very small, and beekeepers are very well organized. Uh, this is the most important thing when you start developing capitalism. On the other hand, uh, in other countries, uh, we had uh, firstly. Uh, to, the, to determine the uh, tourism organization, when they adopt uh, the idea of up tourism, then we could start with beekeepers uh, because uh, they need support for, from tourism destination to start up tourism as an add value to classical uh, uh, beekeeping. This is the idea that is vice versa uh, to Slovenia. And uh, what, um, uh, what was int uh, very interesting for me was that, that I had different position in Slovenia. Uh, I need few years uh, to show uh, uh, Slovenian uh, tourism board to our ministry that happy tourism is something that is really worth it to be supported. And on the other hand, uh, I got, uh, when uh, I, uh, I give lectures to other countries, uh, there are more people from tourism industry than beekeeping. Uh, they really want, they already have products that they would like to implement, but there is a problem uh, with the knowledge and um, availability of beekeepers that want to work on up tourism. Mm. Fascinating. Wow, I, I've learned a lot today. Tanya, thank you so much for, for taking the time to share with us everything you know about this. And if anyone would like to get in touch with you, your email and websites are on the screen. Yes, 
Thank you, Eric, for having me here. And I wish you a great uh, event uh, at the, the later stage. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, for everyone else attending the next sessions, we will be over in that room shortly. So we'll go ahead and end here and we'll see you in the next room. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.